Right, hi. Well, I, I posted a video recently on the subject of amblyopia, but I, I wasn't very happy with the way that I had communicated some of the points. So I've decided to redo it again. Uh, so if you saw the first one, this is just a, hopefully an improved version of that. But um, amblyopia is, a, is an important condition to understand. It's one that affects quite a, a lot of people. In the Western world, it's between 1 and 5% of the population. And in areas where eye care is not so well developed, then it's going to be more than that. And amblyopia can come in sort of very severe forms or in mild forms. So it's basically um, just reduced visual acuity um, that is created through the brain not having a sharp image to work with during the early stages of development of a child. So those first years of a child's life is critical for the development of their visual pathway. Um, they say that, that that pathway is developing over the first eight years, but between up until the age of five even, that's the most critical point really. So uh, this is why this is such an important issue. And uh, we're going to go through the, the various causes of amblyopia and some of the treatments um, that can be done to help avoid it. Now, we've got three main categories of causes for amblyopia. The, the most common one being uncorrected refractive error, which is what this video is going to be dealing with to begin with. There's also strabismus, which is the next uh, category, which is um, like a squint or a lazy eye. It's where the two eyes are not lining up properly together. And you've got one eye that's deviating away, either f towards the nose or outwardly or up or down. So that's, that's the, a squint, that's, that's a lazy eye. That's something that is actually quite visible. So that helps us when we're trying to assess child's, a child's vision uh, to understand that there is a problem here. With uncorrected refractive error, with amotropia, it's not that visible. So um, this is a lot more difficult to detect, which is why it is such a critical thing that we understand. Um, so that when we are assessing a child's vision, we can pick up on any, un any refractive error and then deal with it as early as possible. The third category is deprivation due to an obstruction. So for example, if a child is born with cataracts, congenital cataracts, um, that cataract will prevent the visual pathway, that's the communication between the eye and the brain, from developing properly in those early years. And, you know, we've come across children who are about eight years old with congenital cataracts in Africa and it's too late for them. Even if you were to take those cataracts out, they would not be able to see because the damage has already been done. And the damage is done predominantly in the back of the brain in the visual cortex, which is where the information is processed. The information that comes from the retina goes to the visual cortex in the brain. Remember that the eyes are just an extension of the brain. So the, the light that, that comes to the retina is then sent to the visual cortex in the back of the brain and that visual cortex then has to learn to process that information. And if the image that it has to work with is insufficient or is not sharp, then it will affect the development of the visual cortex in the brain to the point where it won't be able to process that information even when the amotropia is corrected later on in life. So this is why we have to deal with these visual problems as early as possible because amblyopia is unreversible. Once the visual acuity has been lost it cannot be recovered because it's not so much a deficiency with the eye itself. The eye could be quite normal but the problem is, the, uh, is, the, is the, the back of the brain, the, the visual cortex aspect of the brain. That is, that's where the problem is. That's where the deficiency is. So, well, in this video, we're going to be looking at uncorrected uh, refractive error. Well, I'm just moving a bit closer to the camera now because I want to use this model to explain a little bit about um, how amyotropia works and how it affects the eye and, and the, the development of the, the visual pathway to the brain and why is it such a problem and can cause amblyopia. So as you know, um, the eye has, at the front of the eye we've got the cornea here, we've got the lens that is located behind the iris 
And then behind that is the retina, which is a layer of nerve cells that collect the, the light that is coming through. And then it, it then passes that information along the optic nerve to the brain, where it is then processed and vision is then, is then formed in the brain. So the eye is just literally an extension of the brain. So now when a, a baby is born, they are born usually with two diopters of hypermetropia. They are born long-sighted and the reason for that is because the eyeball is growing. So they are born with about two diopters of hypermetropia which means that the, the focal length is actually behind the retina and the idea being that as the eye develops and grows the axial length of the eye will then start to match the focal point. So the main focusing mechanism of the eye is the cornea and the lens and uh, the, if those two are doing their job correctly then the image would be formed nice and sharp on the retina. So uh, by the time that they are five or six hopefully we will find that those things marry up and they will end up with a nice sharp image and that is an emetropic eye, an eye with no refractive error. However, if a child is born with myopia, if they're born with the image forming in front of the retina because the cornea and the, the lens are not doing their job properly, they're putting too much positive power on the light as it comes in and it's focusing the image in front of the retina, then we have a problem because the eye is still growing and the retina is actually moving away from the focal point. So the image is getting more and more blurred as the eye develops. And, and it's considered that even as little as minus 050 of myopia can develop into amblyopia if it's uncorrected at a very early age. So that's how critical this is. If a child or a baby is born with hypermetropia more than two diopters, then again you have a problem. The image is, is being formed behind the retina, and even with the development of the eye as it grows, it, it doesn't quite reach where the focal point is. And therefore the retina has only got a blurred image to deal with, and that blurred image is being relayed back to the brain, and the brain doesn't like it. Now if it's got one eye that's good, better than the other one, then it will, the brain will concentrate on the good eye, and it will suppress the not so good eye and that's why um, that is when amblyopia develops. Astigmatism can cause amblyopia. Anything over a diopter of astigmatism can lead to amblyopia because for the same reason the image on the retina is not sharp enough and therefore there is a loss in visual acuity because the brain that visual pathway to the brain is not developing as it should. Keratoconus is a, is a condition where the cornea at the front of the eye uh, is thin and as a result of the pressure being caused by the aqueous humor in the anterior chamber which is just behind the cornea, the cornea actually starts to bulge outwards that of course affects the light pathway into the back of the eye it creates lots of astigmatism and you end up with a very poor image at the back of the eye which the brain doesn't like it will suppress that eye and it will become amblyopic. Any high degree of myopia or hypermetropia like plus six or minus six, that's, that will cause obviously a deficiency in the development of the visual cortex at the back of the brain and that eye will become amblyopic. So that is refractive amblyopia. Amblyopia as a result of refractive error. And I'll just, um, just recap a little bit uh, on those. So in the case of myopia, minus 050 is a problem. For a, uh, in that if that isn't corrected or worse at an early age, then that can lead to amblyopia. With hypermetropia, hypermetropia, anything over plus 2, greater than plus two is a problem. Astigmatism, anything over a one cell is a problem and can develop into amblyopia. Anisometropia is another form of refractive amblyopia. Anisometropia that's where you have uh, two very different powers in each eye 
where the refractive error between the two eyes is quite significant. The brain will then focus on the better eye and suppress the weaker one. So if, for example, you've got a, a plus 350 in one eye and a plus 150 in the other, there's, there's a big difference between those two and the brain will concentrate on the better eye. The least blurred image, it will concentrate on that one and it will suppress the other one. So anisometropia is another cause of amblyopia. Amblyopia can affect both eyes or it might affect only one eye. It might be severe or it may be mild. So it comes in sort of varying degrees. You know, an emetropic eye, as we know, you should be able to see down to 6'6". Six, six. Somebody who has no amotropia should be able to read down to 6'6 six, six without any problems. Now even with their correction, if one eye can see 6'6 six, six and the other one can only see 6'9, that's the best vision you can get, then this eye would be considered to be amblyopic in comparison to this one because there is a difference. And uh, it, that is the result of uncorrected amotropia at an early age, possibly. If the, refract if the um, visual acuity is a lot worse than that, then it becomes more of an issue. If it's quite mild, then you know, the, the, uh, the person probably wouldn't notice. But if it gets down to sort of 618 or 624 in one eye, and uh, even if they can see 66 in the other eye, you know, it will affect their vision because they will be, the brain will be using this eye nearly all the time and it will affect their depth perception. So uh, just bear in mind that amblyopia cannot be corrected after a certain point. So it's really important that we do examine children as early as possible to try and pick up on refractive error and get it corrected as soon as possible to prevent amblyopia from setting in and which will result in a permanent loss of visual acuity. Right, so just to recap, um, to prevent amblyopia, then we need to really correct any refractive error in a child as early as possible before the age of five. Now, if amblyopia has set in a little bit, what practitioners will often do is to cover the dominant eye and that will force the brain then to start using the weaker one and it will keep that visual pathway open between the brain and the weaker eye and eventually, hopefully, um, you know, that connection will be re-established and the brain will start to then work with both eyes together. So patching, uh, again in childhood, uh, maybe a few hours every day for a few months has been shown to be effective in bringing the, other, the weaker eye back into play. So in the next video we're going to be looking at strabismus and perhaps some of the other more obstructive reasons that can lead to amblyopia.